I'd like to welcome everyone here today to, for, to for your and thank you for your participation in, in plenary number six. Um, our objectives today with this plenary are to give you an overview of the global exploration strategy and introduce ISEG, the International Space Exploration Coordination Group that was formed to help advance the global exploration strategy as well as leave you with an idea of the importance of this activity in forming the, uh, the uh, decision making and planning and activities within individual participating agencies. So we will share the perspectives of large agencies and small agencies and, and hope to leave you after the session today with the impression that space agencies around the world are very interested and actively engaged in coordinating and setting the stage for cooperations to implement this, this uh, global exploration strategy. So let me um, start out by introducing our distinguished panelists. I'd like to thank everyone for their participation today. What we have are, uh, are representatives from agencies that have been very active in the ISEG working group since its inception, and all our, our uh, senior leaders in their agencies responsible for exploration activities and human spaceflight activities. So let me start with Dr. Simonetta Di Pippo. She is the Director of Human Spaceflight at the European Space Agency, ESA, and, and she is responsible for all human spaceflight activities, including ISS and exploration preparatory activities. Mr. Doug Cook is the Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems within the NASA uh, ESMD organization. He is responsible for managing the development of NASA's next generation human spaceflight systems, preparing for missions beyond low Earth orbit. He's also responsible for the commercial crew and cargo development activities, human research, and the technologies and activities that prepare for exploration. Um, Dr. David Parker from the UKSA is um, unable to join us this morning. Something unexpected came up, but in the spirit of uh, flexibility and uh, adaptability that represents the ISEG, um, we've, we've adjusted the plan, and we will uh, we'll, um, welcome Dr. Parker Parker when he, can, uh, when he can join us, but the UK has been very active in the ISEC since its beginning. Uh, Mr. Gilles Leclerc is from CSA. He's the Director General for Space Exploration, and he is responsible for all CSA activities, uh, exploration activities, including science missions, ISS, and other exploration preparatory activities. Mr. Yoshiyuki Hasegawa is from JAXA. He is the, an Associate Executive Director of JAXA and the Managing Director of JAXA's Lunar and Planetary Exploration Program Group. As such, he's responsible for space exploration and future manned missions beyond ISS, and until recently served as the ISS Program Manager with, within JAXA. Um, Dr. Yoon Sup Sim is from CARI, the Korean uh, Space Agency. He is the Director of the Space Applications and Future Technology Center. And as such, as such, he has responsibility for four major departments, space science, satellite navigation, future satellite technologies, and future launch vehicle technologies. So I'd like to welcome and thank you all for your participation in this panel today. Um, I'm serving as the moderator because NASA is currently holding the, uh, the rotating chairmanship of the ISEG. So my name is Kathy Larini, and I'm pleased to, uh, pleased to be serving. So we've got um, a, a program plan that hits on five key topic areas that will introduce you to the global exploration strategy and the mechanism that agencies are using to implement it. Um, we will start, the format of this discussion is we will start with a very short presentation by one of our panelists to give you a, a feeling for the, for the topic area. And, and then we will, um, uh, we set aside some, times to, some time to uh, share thoughts and the perspectives of our panelists. And uh, I will be in charge of time, so um, I, I ask your forgiveness and understanding in advance for any effort I might make to uh, speed the process along. So thank you very much for, uh, for your, your um, understanding. And we will be taking questions at the end, and, uh, and there are some microphones, and um, we'll handle it just by, uh, by raising hands and, and going to a microphone and, and taking questions that way. So um, with that, um, the first topic area is the global exploration strategy. So uh, uh, Doug, would you like to kick us off? Let me sure, I'll start. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll pass it over to Dr. Sim, uh, Simonetta de Pepo. Um, 
The, uh, the global exploration strategy grew out of um, um, uh, actually a workshop that we held in Washington, D.C. in April 2006, where um, we brought together it's about 200 people um, who had experience in studying or planning exploration activities, and it included uh, academia, uh, government, industry, and international participation. And uh, at this, um, a number of themes and objectives for, in this case, lunar exploration um, were uh, conceived and brought together. And, and just shortly after that, uh, we began to meet uh, as an international group, um, uh, including 14 space agencies, to build on this work to develop the global exploration strategy. Um, and the, the um, agencies are listed on the chart. Um, but it was, uh, it was a very healthy discussion beginning. Uh, it was the development of a strategy. It was to bring together countries in, in planning and understanding uh, what it takes to go explore. And it's been a very healthy exercise ever since then. Uh, we, we thought that, that our goals were to articulate a compelling case for exploration of humans and robots beyond low Earth orbit. And, um, and to set the forum and, and put, the, put, the, uh, uh, put in place the, the, um, the mechanism for developing a global strategy to set priorities and, and to understand it, uh, international uh, standardization and issues that, that come with uh, working on te technical uh, missions of the sort. So in, in our view, it, it's been intended to be the forum for developing an international um, strategy for exploration and the, the, um, uh, the place where we come together and, and figure out uh, what it takes to go explore and what our, what our own part in that will be. So um, I will now pass it over to Simone. Uh, thank you, Doug. Um, I have to say that uh, since the beginning, uh, all the activities related to the global exploration strategy uh, have been a clear uh, example of international cooperation. I mean, the way in which we have uh, started to work together in this field and the way in which we are uh, continuously working towards the future. But just to give you a, a bit of history on that, uh, the Global Exploration Strategy, the Framework for Cooperation, has been jointly released in May 2007. And I remember that we, when we had to coordinate the time <laughs> of the release during the day, it was not so easy, as you can imagine, because we had uh, agencies spread over uh, the globe. And so it was, uh, it was uh, per se already a, a big effort. And in any case, uh, uh, what is important to underline uh, in, in, in this global exploration strategy framework for cooperation um, is that we wanted to, to underline the vision for a globally coordinated human and robotic exploration of destinations uh, reachable by humans. And uh, as you can see in the slide, low Earth orbit, moon, asteroids, and Mars. So uh, we are taking into account and, and working on the various destinations and also on trying to see how we can reach them in a coordinated way. Uh, what is important to underline here is that it's not, the global exploration strategy is not a proposal for a single global uh, program, but it is more a, a sort of a coordinated approach, so it takes into account uh, the fact that uh, we can really accomplish more if we work together in a coordinated way, having the same requirements and the same goals, but with different uh, uh, desires in the different uh, countries and agencies. Thank you. And Dr. DePibo, um you mentioned low Earth orbit. Um, ISS is, not, is mentioned in the GES, but not, not prominently mentioned. Um, with the, has the role of the significance of the ISS increased now that its lifetime seems likely to be extended? Yeah, for sure. When, when, when we were discussing the global exploration strategy, we, uh, we were considering the International Space Station. But at that time, uh, the fact that the extension was 
taken for granted was not yet there. So we are still talking about uh, a lifetime of the ISS until 2015. And so it was considered, but it was not in the, in the long-term plan. Now that we are talking about extending, and I have to say only Europe is still missing in, in, in getting there <laughs> the, the, to, to get the final uh, uh, decision for the extension because the other four partners already are, uh, declared their, uh, their uh, firm intent to go ahead. And still also have to consider the fact, we have to consider the fact that we are working from a technical standpoint to certify uh, our hardware uh, on the space station up to 2028, which means that from now on we have more or less other two decades in front of us. Uh, for utilizing the space station. Uh, and also I have to say that both at ISAC level and at ISS partnership level, we are discussing more and more how to use ISS for exploration. I, I'm sure, and this is, I mean, you know quite well that this is, these are the discussions of these very days, uh, we are trying to put together the two words, I mean ISS in, in the Global Exploration Strategy world. And I have to say up to now with good success. Excellent, thank you. Um, Mr. Cook, uh, the, global exploration strategy talk, the global exploration strategy talks about extending human presence and missions to Mars and asteroids and the moon. Do we have a common def definition of what it means? Are we talking one mission? Are we talking several missions? Are we talking colonies? Well, I think it, it's open to, um, to further discussion as to how this unfolds. Uh, certainly, um, um, there are, are many missions possible, both robotic and, and human, and um, um, it, I think as we lay out uh, this um, strategy in the future, we will be um, putting uh, into place a, um, um, a timeline or a schedule of, of when the various countries are, are doing missions or working missions together, and it'll, it'll provide us an opportunity to to understand uh, how we can collaborate on those and, and work together. So it'll be many missions, I'm sure, but, but hopefully we'll be able to combine our efforts to uh, make them more effective. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we're gonna switch to, I'll give you a little bit more insight into the, into the benefit themes laid out in the, G, in the Global Exploration Strategy, the GES, um, in, in line with the, the theme of the conference, benefiting uh, humans on Earth, uh, providing benefits to humans. Um, the GES took special care in addressing this topic. So, um, Mr. Hasegawa? Yeah, GES, uh, yeah, you can see that this picture is a five, uh, multilateral meaning, uh, manned spacecraft uh, uh, activity combined uh, uh, multilateral meanings. So we divided uh, five items. So I will show you with one of each. Uh, number one, a new knowledge in, in science and technology. We have a benefit for uh, uh, having the, this activity in uh, global exploration strategy in future at a time uh, manned space uh, exploration and uh, also large international cooperation effort that mankind by uh, try to attempt in the frontier of the space. We can say that it is the symbol of the mankind, uh, the challenge for the future as we must overcome various difficulty and continuity endeavor to explore the future mankind uh, cooperatively. Through new uh, space uh, exploration, we seek to acquire the cutting edge technology. This is a very important point for the, uh, each countries, and also foster new technology and knowledges. So the second item is sustaining presence extended uh, human frontier. Uh, our first steps in space exploration have already expanded beyond the Earth orbit. A brief story by the Apollo astronauts uh, required for the ability to sustain human for uh, only a few days uh, on the moon's surface. However, there was no attempt to establish a long-term presence in the moon. Space station, ISS, uh, space station like uh, Russian Mir and uh, International Space Station ISS have extended our staying power to months and years in a manner that uh, required the constant support from the Earth. Going further afield and establishing a long term will require a significant commitment of the human 
science and technical and economic resources. So why send humans? Why not uh, let robotics do it all? Humans have a unique decision-making capability that show, uh, allow us them to respond to a new situation based on the previous experience and knowledge. And the third item is economic expansion. Uh, the first stage, uh, stage space activity were driven by the national space agencies, but the business has uh, gradually come to play a large role. Today, much billion uh, industry uses its satellite to provide telephone, internet, high quality TV, HD TV broadcasting, and also recently Earth observation satellite is also included. Space exploration extended to the moon and Mars. Uh, there will be a potential opportunity for the companies to provide the crew and the cargo transportation services. We will need to support human far from Earth by conserving resources and recycling as much as possible. Meeting this challenge will foster spin-off opportunity in the fields and medicine, agriculture, and environmental management, and help achieve sustainability development on the Earth. And fourth item, global partnership. This is a very important uh, point. Uh, this large-scale and human being has never experienced activities need various fields of science and technology. It depends on the ability and the creativity of the human resources. This could establish the firm partnership that has enabled us to overcome various challenges. We international partners have cultivated international cooperation mechanism and split through the programs. This culture will be indispensable for the uh, realizing future relationship in various fields except uh, out of the space. And uh, last item five, fifth, is uh, inspiration and education. Activities in science technology is one of the important fields for the future prospectivity. Uh, it depends uh, uh, on the ability and the creativity. Also, fostering young people who lead the next generation is necessary. I believe human space activities are one of the good materials uh, experience for the getting interest of the young generation. The finally, uh, uh, I pick up the word uh, Walt Disney, Disneyland founder Walt Disney said that uh, when we look from the deep space, we can see the, the future Earth. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Leclerc, it seems that there is consensus here at the IAC that we need to do a better job at articulating the benefits, the be a better job of engaging the public. What are you doing at CSA and, and how can ISEG help? Well, the, the, nature, the nature and scope of the, the benefits is very large and, and diverse because space exploration itself touches a, a variety, a very wide spectrum of human activities. Uh, space exploration is centrally science and technology, but it's a lot more than science and technology. So, and we all realize that we need to do a better job at engaging uh, my colleagues said, our stakeholders and the public on the benefits of, uh, of, uh, of space exploration. So in the case of CSA, uh, partnerships are essential. We are a, a small agency by, by any means. Uh, inspiration and education is a very powerful tool uh, to inspire to, uh, for awareness and learning, uh, for science education in general. Uh, and all, Coming back to the GES, although the GES is very much a cooperative endeavor, uh, there are benefits for each space agency individually. Uh, in, the case of, in the case of CSA, looking back in history, in terms of national pride, national identity, uh, the Canadar has become a very powerful symbol. Uh, it helps that the name of your country is included in a piece of hardware, but it, is, it has become through years truly a an important symbol that the challenge for us will be to identify uh, powerful imagery in the, in the future for Canada in space. Thank you. Dr. Uh, Doug? Yes, I'd just like, um, like to stress a point on, on this part of what we're talking about. Um, so much of our effort and discussions uh, in public and internally are about building things, um, rockets or spacecraft, um, and we a lot of energy is put into that. Uh, the importance of this particular work is that 
it, um, it, it actually talks about what we're going to do uh, when we explore, not how. It talks about what we can achieve. And behind all these themes, there, there are many objectives, uh, scientific objectives and, and objectives for participation by the public um, that, that contribute to our understanding of what we need to do when we go explore. And, but it, it talks more to the achievements that are possible. Thank you. Dr. Sim, what, what is the CARI perspective on the most important benefits in, yeah. in your influencing your participation in this global effort? All right. Uh, I believe that the theme 4 and 5 are more important for the countries, including Korea, which have plans to start uh, space exploration in the near future, because the public support is critical to urge government on the space exploration, and the global partnership is the most efficient way uh, to develop the space technology. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to uh, shift and talk about the ISEG, the International Space Exploration Coordination Group, the forum that was identified to advance the global exploration strategy. And, uh, and so, um, Mrs. DePipo, Dr. DePipo, would you please lead us through this? Yeah. Um, what I would like, hi, right. David. <laughs> Welcome, um, Dr. Park. What I would like to underline in this uh, very short presentation is uh, how we have put together which are the main, I would say, features of the global exploration strategy and how it is linked to the ISEC, so the International Space Exploration Coordination Group, which has been set up uh, as the coordination mechanism um, among the uh, space agencies inside in the framework of the global exploration strategy. Uh, it's important to underline that uh, the global scale space exploration represents the sum of many projects which are undertaken at national level but also in an international way, bilateral, multi multilateral and so on. But it's also underlines a collective will uh, to find answers to a certain number of questions, to create new economic opportunities, and also to expand the boundaries of humans' life beyond Earth. This is a discussion which is also linked now uh, to the ISS, to the International Space Station, because ISS is already beyond Earth in a way or another and is a step towards the human exploration of the solar system. And is, uh, I would say, more and more, we are now trying to consider what we can do on the Earth to prepare for the future exploration, what we can do on ISS to prepare for that, and what we have to do as the next logical step, so which is the next destination for what we want to do. And this is discussed day by day, I would say, inside the ISEC. Um, so the global exploration strategy uh, provides a framework to coordinate all these efforts and is uh, easy on one side because we have the same, the same goal uh, and uh, quite challenging on the other one because each of the agency has its own um, national or domestic uh, requirements, I, I would say, to fulfill. Uh, so, uh, just to briefly uh, give you uh, a description of which are the terms of reference, I mean the main purpose of, of Isaac, again, is to provide a forum for participants to discuss their interests, objectives and plans in space exploration, and also to promote interest and engagement in space exploration activities throughout the society. And therefore, ISEC uh, is a symbol, it's the symbol of the commitment of all the members of the Global Exploration Strategy. And it's a way, it's a tool on one side, but it's a way of showing the world how you can really work together uh, for a common goal. Um, what, what you will also get a little bit more um, later on is which are the outcomes uh, we uh, are thinking about on one side and what we have done already. 
So as I said, is a, is a forum of, for sharing information and to understand how we can put together plans and, and uh, capabilities. Um, ISAG is, is also the goal of identifying uh, near-term opportunities for coordination and cooperation, performing joint assessments on future missions, and also on glo global missions, which means uh, missions made by a uh, few elements or several elements, defining shared requirements for exploration, Reflecting also on the role of the different destinations, and by the way, these very days is a very interesting discussion, where to go, when, how. Identifying opportunities for maximizing benefits of near-term investments. Again, utilization of the ISS for exploration, robotic precursor missions for human exploration, and identifying opportunities for long-term roles of the various partners. So it's really, uh, a very good tool uh, to put together, as I said, all the efforts for a common goal. Thank you. So, Dr. Parker, um, what, what Dr. DePipo has outlined is a, is, a, is a coordination forum where agencies work together to, to develop products that help inform their individual agency decision making. It's not a, it's not a, a decision-making body in itself, but it develops products and enables coordination to inform individual agency decision-makings. There's 14 agencies participating in ISEG right now. Uh, can others join? And what advice would you give national agencies or entities that may be considering joining ISEG? Well, I think it's really important to understand that, that ISEG is not a closed shop, that it's uh, uh, an inclusive organization that's ready to bring new members into the fold. So. Uh, existing agencies participate in different levels depending on their resources, their time, what they have available in terms of people. So uh, therefore it is not uh, any agency that has a serious commitment to space exploration can apply to join. It's a very simple process and uh, through that to participate in the meetings and events that are going on. And I would strongly encourage them to do so. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Sim, having been an active participant, what is the significance of ISEG in your opinion? Okay. Uh, CARI has joined this ISAC uh, to develop uh, relevant technology to explore the moon and beyond. Thus, it would be better if the opportunity to join international partnership and the incentives such as MOU between government levels to encourage our government to in invest the space exploration in Korea would be given by ISAC. Thank you. Dr. Uh, I'd like to explain, uh, talk about a little bit about uh, my experience, ISS uh, activities. Uh, initial phase, uh, ISS conceptual phase in 1985-1990, time frame five or six years. That is a uh, similar kind of the ISAC G activities. Uh, at the time, uh, uh, each agency has each idea, so a double function or sometimes miss the function or each country has each benefit or national benefit to promote, to, to coordinate. So in order to include those double functions or triple functions into the integration phase, that at the time, 1990 to 1992 or three, three years is, are required to summarize. Uh, so uh, it, based on that experience, Isaac G, this is a still a conceptual phase and also uh, bring at uh, each agency or a potential agency or countries uh, a candidate to involved in, uh, in uh, uh, exploration strategy. Uh, at the time, this is a good chance for us to coordinate or integrate, to pick up the uh, idea or some uh, misunderstanding or communication sharing. That is very important. So I said, G time frame, that is not a fixed uh, agency, uh, uh, that government agreement. This is just only forum, it's a soft uh, uh, contact and uh, uh, free talking uh, working groups uh, line up. So it's a good chance for us, for our candidate uh, agencies to come in. Yeah, it's, it's an it's a early opportunity to explore concepts together and start thinking about 
the roles that individual agencies might want to play in enabling this common vision that are aligned with their capabilities and their interests, and uh, that's very well said. Um, so now we're going to give you a little bit of a, an overview of a, of a product that ISEG has, has just developed called the Reference Architecture for Human Lunar Exploration. We're not going to go into it in much detail. There is a session immediately following this plenary where a couple of presentations will, uh, will overview the, the architecture in detail. And you can also find information about it on the ISEG website. But um, to give you a flavor of the kind of products we're talking about, um, Mr. Cook will share with you what we've done on the ISEG Reference Architecture for Human Lunar Exploration. Yes, thanks, Kathy. Um, First, I want to explain, uh, I'm not sure everybody always understands terminology that we use, but, but uh, and when we talk about architecture, uh, we're talking about missions, we're talking about um, how we operate, uh, what, are, what are the operations involved in, in exploring, what are the, uh, the vehicle concepts, what are, do you have a habitat, do you have rovers, how do they operate together. So when we talk about an architecture, it's a mission concept that that um, may be multi-mission multi but, but satisfies the objectives. And so as, as uh, we start off, uh, because of our, 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 our guidance in, in recent years has been lunar focused, um, we began uh, to develop uh, together uh, an architecture for uh, exploring the moon. Um, I, I should say that, that the intent here is to develop an architecture that, is, that actually is responsive to the themes and objectives that were uh, talked about earlier, uh, so that we are uh, putting things in place in an architecture that, that um, uh, develop the capabilities to, make the, to achieve uh, these objectives. Um, and so, so it enables, it, it enables uh, these, uh, these achievements. Um, and, and so uh, as, we, as we do this, uh, we, we, uh, we work together and we put together these concepts and we come up with an um, international vision in this case of, of what the missions would be like, what they would achieve, uh, what are the concepts of uh, operations. Um, we, we look at the, the objectives we, uh, and we develop the approaches to exploration and the concepts in, involved in the space vehicles. Um, and so uh, this helps to develop our understanding of, of what agencies may do. Uh, it, uh, because you're thinking through it, talking through it, you develop together an idea of what, what is going to occur on these missions. And, and each country and, and agency can uh, begin to think about how they would want to be involved in this. Um, it, it addresses the technologies uh, and the focus that we need to, to make uh, to the focus that we need to put in our technology programs to, to get ready for these missions, including, um, as, as was discussed earlier, use of uh, International Space Station to test out uh, reliability of systems, to test out human capabilities, and, and so on. Um, another important discussion in all this has been talk of standardization and interfaces so that as we bring together our capabilities internationally, they, they work together. Um, uh, this was a big lesson coming out of Space Station. And so um, as we work the, through this, we understand the roles of, of the various agencies by understanding the op operations and opportunities that are associated with it, and then can begin to develop partnerships in, in achieving these types of missions. Let's go to the next chart. So um, in this case, um, as what, what came out of the, the, this particular architecture work, uh, are different phases of exploration that would occur in a, in, in a lunar campaign, uh, beginning with the early robotic phases, uh, where, you, where you send robots to the moon to scout out certain locations, to learn more about them, also to understand the hazards involved and in in actually the engineering uh, constraints and parameters that, that need to be addressed in design. Um, and then, um, in this case, uh, we looked at uh, polar exploration, uh, polar regions of the moon, both North Pole and South Pole, as possibilities where there's uh, near uh, continuous sunlight so that power is not a big issue and you're able, and it is also a very interesting place both from an exploration standpoint and scientifically. Um, but this doesn't answer all the objectives, so uh, we learned through this process that it's important to be able to get away from the poles as well because you can't satisfy all the scientific objectives in particular by being in one location. So uh, a, a, an effort to, to provide mobility to um, 
venture away from the polar regions was looked at. And then you get into um, uh, sortie type missions where you might go other locations uh, for uh, the period of a Earth or a period of a moon day, which is 14 Earth days, uh, where you have continuous sunlight so that you can actually explore many other interesting locations. And then um, for the long term, uh, potentially having uh, long duration stays of crews on, on the moon. So this is kind of how it lays out. As Kathy said, there will be more coming up. And, and so um, uh, the sustainability is also important. Our, our ability to, um, to continue operations when people aren't there to have robots uh, doing the exploration. Uh, affordability is, is uh, an issue that we all have to deal with. Um, we have to be able to operate within our budgets and, and um, by combining efforts uh, internationally we can uh, begin to address uh, this issue. Um, it, it's also important to, to have versatile uh, capabilities that can be reused and, and um, used over and over for different purposes. Um, the, uh, there, are, there are scientific interests in the moon uh, that are uh, shared by the international, all the international partners. Um, so there, there, there is an interest in addressing those uh, as we explore different parts of the moon. And, and so uh, if the flexibility is important. The, um, and uh, central in a lot of the discussions are space station lessons learned. Uh, we've learned an incredible amount in, in operating space station at this point in developing that capability together with international partners and um, there are definitely uh, lessons learned that are being employed in, in discussing these architectures. Um, so uh, this activity has helped to show us in, in, in fact uh, the benefits of early coordination uh, amongst the international partners as we foresee our future and as uh, time goes on uh, through uh, ISEG uh, we plan to evolve the architecture work to other destinations um, so that we have a, a broader understanding of, of the exploration uh, internationally and can set our objectives. Yeah, as a follow-on, Mr. Cook, you know, a lot of great work went into developing this architecture and it is being regarded as a model of early coordination, early co cons consultation, yet it seems that NASA unilaterally, if you will, changed its, uh, its course from the moon into the next step of, of, uh, of a NEO in, in 2025. Do you want to comment on that? Is, it still a, is the moon still an interesting destination for NASA? How will, how will the ISEG be used to, uh, and, and will you fire me after this question? <laughs> well, I'll have to discuss that part later, but <laughs> no, you won't be fired. Um, <laughs> Uh, the moon is still interesting. Um, it is one of the destinations that we talk about. Is it's um, uh, we are learning more and more about the moon as we send missions there. Our own lunar reconnaissance orbiter um, and the LCROSS missions have uh, brought back uh, incredible data that helps us understand the moon. So the moon is still interesting, and as a part of the flexible path approach that we talk about. Um, uh, what we'll be doing now is, is looking more broadly. We'll look at near-Earth objects. We are beginning to have those discussions. And, um, but by going through this type of process uh, that, we, that we did in this architecture work and in developing a strategy, uh, this work by the ISEG actually can help formulate um, what can be done in exploration and what priorities should be. Thank you. Any comment? David? Uh, and of course, um, more, more countries, more nations are doing exploration than NASA. So this roadmap, uh, this architecture work for the moon, it has helped, will help inform many other countries that are considering lunar exploration, for example, the robotic phase. So there are a number of nations talking about robotic missions to the moon. Through this tool, they can understand how that relates to a longer term, to longer term vision. And for me, the critical thing about the success of this, this particular exercise was if you like, people went into it with a presumption about a fixed base at the South Pole, and what came out of it was something completely different. It was a, this multi-element, a sortie approach, the use of robotics when the astronauts were not there, and so it demonstrated the power of the working together and bringing the different skills and experiences from different agencies to bear on the problem. So I, thought, I think it was particularly impressive. Thank you. Um, Dr. Sim, from the perspective of a smaller agency, what can ISEG do to help with products like this enable a, a role for, for agencies well, like CARI? 
Okay. Uh, I believe that this reference architecture seems to be too large scale in order to refer or utilize itself uh, by the country which are about to start space explorations. So I think it would be more useful for the developing country if a smaller scale or transcendental missions incorporated into this reference uh, architecture. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Leclerc, you, uh, your team was active in the development of this architecture and it came at the same time as a, as a, a stimulus funding from your government. Do you want to comment on how this was, in, it was able, able, with this activity influenced and informed your decision making? Yes, thanks, Gaddy. Uh, to illustrate the relevance of the lunar architecture, uh, back in 2009, that, that's only a year ago, we, we got the Government of Canada allocated the Canadian Space Agency more than $100 million to develop the next generation of robotics as well as prototypes for Martian and lunar rovers. We were able to use the, uh, the lunar architecture document in real time almost to define the requirements, modify and adjust uh, the work, uh, the, the scope of our calls for proposals for this, uh, this important activity. So for us, very practically, it, it's, it already has shown benefits uh, to position us smartly. We're, uh, again, we're a small agency, we're a niche player, and this is really uh, important for us. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to talk about a key forward activity uh, uh, that ISAG is, is just, just initiating, the Global Exploration Roadmap. So, Mr. Leclerc? Mr. Leclerc, yes. please. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah, back in June, the, uh, the senior agency managers representing the, uh, the, the organizations contributing to ISEG have agreed to start the development of a global exploration roadmap. Uh, what is the global exploration roadmap? Uh, it's a product and a process. The process is really important given that the central role of this group is to coordinate and plan for the future of exploration. So the, uh, the GER, the roadmap, uh, will describe actual space agencies' activities and plans. It will uh, address the missions, the capabilities required for these missions, and it will be evolutionary in the sense that it will look at how these capabilities with, will evolve over time. Uh, it will also include recommendations on the next steps that will enable the global exploration strategy. The goals of the Global Exploration Roadmap are to maximize the benefits of each planned activity or mission, uh, to facilitate over time the alignment of space exploration plans and programs by all agencies to identify the complementarity, the synergies, the gaps between our activities, and finally to encourage timely and coordinated focused investments uh, for the future. So, and the roadmap will be truly global. Uh, it is international, uh, and it also covers the whole, uh, the, the full portfolio of activities and plans for exploration, science, and technology. So the global exploration roadmap is the next step for ISEG. It is a very important one. What one might say, it, it is the, one of the reasons why ISEG was created. It is, I, I must say, a truly unprecedented effort internationally. The roadmap is, I cannot emphasize, emphasize it enough, uh, very important for the future of our group and for the future of global exploration. It is, uh, ISEG is a young organization, a young institution, and I can see enough uh, about the, uh, the very positive spirit and the, uh, the support that each agency has demonstrated uh, in, this, uh, in this effort so far. So the global exploration roadmap uh, is a test for ISEG, and it is, it is an important one. It will help each space agency, especially the, the smaller ones, to position, them smell, position themselves smartly for the future. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cook, while countries, agencies like, like Russia, India, and China are, are, are at, participating within ISEG, they haven't been very active in the, the, the working groups within ISEG to develop the products. Um, how concerned are you with that, that as we set forward on the Global Exploration Roadmap activity? 
Um, I, w I guess I wouldn't say I, I, I'm overly concerned. I think that that will come. Um, I do encourage their further participation uh, in, in the work. Um, I think um, as we all work together uh, in developing um, these strategies and, and roadmaps that um, it, it's a stronger effort the more participation we get, in, including uh, agencies or countries uh, out beyond those even. So uh, we, we all, I know that we all encourage uh, per broader participation than, than we currently have, although what we have now is a very strong start in my mind. Thank you. Dr. Parker, will you share your perspectives and also your, your thoughts on the significance of the roadmap in taking the GES to the next level? Well, I, I think, Kathy, it is the, as you said, the heart of what, of what uh, ISEG was set up to do in many ways <clears throat> and to um, bring together all the different perspectives <clears throat> for the different destinations that are related to space exploration. Again, the, global, the framework document that was created is inclusive. It's not a single destination. It's not a single program. The whole spirit of, of, um, of ISEG is about many activities on different scales, from large projects to small projects. So the trick of the Global Exploration Roadmap is going to be how to accommodate those different scales of activities so different agencies, whether they're large or small, can see their role in it. Um, but ultimately, it is about how we achieve more by working together than we would by working independently. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see the, the activity start and look forward to seeing the outputs. Thank you. Mr. Hasegawa, with the success of Kaguya and Hayabusa and the recent discussions within Japan of an overall exploration strategy and lunar exploration strategy, could you share your perspectives on, uh, on a, this global exploration roadmap activity? Yeah, in, in Japan, uh, we, uh, government uh, uh, established some kind of the, uh, forum to make up the future uh, lunar exploration programs. And also, uh, in parallel way, uh, uh, Hayabusa, it's a uh, narrow objectives go in, uh, go go there and pick up the sample, sample return. That is another programs. So, but uh, manned space program, uh, we uh, focused on uh, lunar itself, lunar uh, next generation. Global exploration roadmap I mentioned uh, several flexibilities, including uh, lunar, Lagrange, or NEO, or the other. Uh, one of uh, one of the item is uh, lunar. So our uh, Japanese uh, uh, way to is uh, the kind of the precursor of the future minor space activities. Lunar is first, Kaguya and Kaguya uh, second, and Kaguya third. Our plan is now uh, 2015 or 2016 time frame. Uh, Kaguya two uh, will. Uh, will go to the lunar and soft landing, and um, a lower lower is going around and pick a sample, and data is returned to us. And the 2020 uh, lunar three, uh, our Kaguya three, uh, that it, uh, uh, polar site uh, landing and uh, pick up the sample. A lower is going around a long way and pick the sample, and uh, sample data is coming back. Also, the small sample must be returned to the. Earth. And then next is manned space uh, activity, but depends on the uh, global exploration uh, uh, mission objective itself. So uh, uh, now our people is joining in uh, 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 this ISEC-G uh, for uh, making the mission objectives, clear mission objectives. And then also uh, based on that objectives, uh, we must develop the uh, technology, required technology but uh, various fields, so we must uh, share the technology and combine into one body. That is uh, Thank a you. time frame. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to ask Simona the final question on the, on the uh, roadmap, but while I do, uh, I would encourage anybody that has a question to uh, um, make your way to a microphone, and, and after this, uh, this incredibly insightful answer, we will hear, we'll take questions from, uh, from you. So, um, Dr. DePipo, th there's a lot of talk, particularly in Europe, of a political forum as being an essential element of our success in uh, enabling these missions beyond low Earth orbit. Um, what, are you, what are your views? What are, what are we really talking about here? Yeah, in Europe, um, what we have done uh, last year, the first uh, uh, EU is a, uh, conference on exploration was held, it was October last year. 
and uh, we are now quite close to uh, to have the second one. Uh, in the and in the meantime, at ESA level, we have developed uh, um, throughout ESA, so with the contribution of uh, a few directorates and so few standpoints, I would say. Um, a certain number of scenarios uh, uh, through which we would like to put together our long-term strategy. And uh, what is important to underline is that um, uh, in this strategy, in this ESA strategy, which is fitting quite well in the overall uh, roadmap, uh, we have identified a certain number of building blocks. And the first building block, which is the closest from the, uh, from the I mean, time-wise, uh, we have the ISS, therefore the ISS for exploration. Uh, we have uh, Mars exploration, namely ExoMars, and we have the lunar lander, and you probably heard that uh, we just started the phase B1 of this lunar lander, and, uh, and we are also collecting uh, a certain number of uh, additional countries interested in participating and Canada just joined so <laughs> and uh, and uh, I have to say that uh, the way in which we are thinking about our, strat our strategy in, in Europe is really done in a way to fit 100 percent inside the global strategy and uh, I, I believe this is also the approach in the other in the other countries and that's a way in which we should do things and that's the way in which we are doing things so I do believe that, again, uh, the way in which we have put together the global exploration strategy and ISAC is the way to go. Any comment? Okay, do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, I have one question. Um, I don't know who was going to answer it, but um, you mentioned several times that this strategy is open for uh, more global cooperation of, of more agencies. Um, what about uh, cooperation with uh, commercial um, programs or non-governmental programs? David, do you want to? Yeah, um, I'm happy to take that one um, because from the UK perspective, in writing the framework document, um, when I was involved in doing that right at the start, we were always very careful to put the economic expansion, economic opportunities into the thinking of the, of the framework document. So although um, the ISEG is made up of space agencies, we absolutely want to encourage and open the door to commercial opportunities in, in space exploration. So that means um, how um, commercial opportunities, robotic missions to the moon might fit in, how commercial services might fit in, that's all absolutely part of the overall vision because to make exploration sustainable, it's going to have to have commercial return where that's possible. Uh, and so um, whilst it, it may look like an organization of space agencies because that's what it is, each of the uh, commercial companies in, uh, in our member states certainly talk to the agencies about how the commercial aspects fit into the overall, um, uh, the overall roadmap. And we certainly would want to see that uh, continue into the future. Thank you. Any other questions? Maybe. Maybe if I just may quickly jump right onto that one, it's, uh, Jürgen Schlutz from DLR. Um, is there some sort of projecting activity in the ISEC-G that is assessing the impact of future developments on the roadmap? I mean, if we're looking at space exploration, especially the roadmap, we're looking 10, 20 years into the future, like um, assessing whether there, if there is a special technology development or a special player coming into the scene what impact that has on the roadmap and on developed architectures or solutions? We want to take that. The technology assessment is probably the... Um, I, would, I would say that um, all of us are looking for all opportunities uh, to collaborate and, and so uh, we, we do try to foresee what may be coming down the road, I believe, and, and both uh, within our own organizations and as we discuss our, our futures together. Um, certainly, um, all, all ideas are welcome. I mean, I would say that um, 
the important thing to remember, this is a road map, road map, not the plan that will be implemented. Undoubtedly, the plan that will be implemented will be something different. And if there are disruptive technologies, to use the technologies phrase, something that comes along that radically changes, that will naturally take its place in the, in the overall roadmap. So, you know, I, I can think of uh, disruptive technologies in access to low Earth orbit, for example, that would change the economics of access to low Earth orbit and, and therefore feed forward into changes in how you would approach uh, exploration. So bring them on is what I would say in terms of, of, of changes. Yeah, and, and, and the roadmap is not a linear process. It has, it has to be flexible, it has to accommodate disruptive technologies, it has to be open to any new development. And again, it will be a living document. There will be many versions of this uh, roadmap over the years. Thank you. Any other questions? Hi. Uh, yeah, I have one. Um, Justin Park of the United States. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, this is going to be very expensive. Uh, I was wondering if the agencies uh, have started to secure funding uh, to implement this, this roadmap. I, I would, I guess, I would answer that a little bit differently. I, th I think we're always, uh, all, a all those of us in the agencies are, are advocating uh, for budgets uh, every year, and and I, 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 the way I would uh, talk about what you're asking is that um, the work that the ISEC is doing, I believe, is helping to inform um, how we advocate for for funding and and. In understanding what collaboration, how collaboration can play into the affordability and, uh, and actually uh, uh, the broader advocacy actually affects that process as well. So uh, it, it's an ongoing process. Uh, I think we, we all uh, we all work to develop uh, our strategies for how we how we go. Uh, budget processes in our, in our own organizations, um, and uh, I, I think that that is a value, I say, in terms of informing those processes. Yes, one last one. We have a question, it's sort of follows on from that. Um, given the economic crisis that uh, is upon many of the governments uh, involved in this program, are you reshaping your arguments to senior political figures? so that you can uh, draw out some clear advantages for cooperation in this area. Uh, Jill, you want to take that one? Anybody? Well, I mean, clearly, the, uh, the, this is not a great time to be planning uh, huge new programs, for in, especially in countries in Europe. Um, and so, to pick up an earlier question, the economic return, the economic benefits of exploration have to be more clearly identified in my, my view. Uh, and then, of course, the benefits in terms of inspiration for science, engineering, technology subjects. So, uh, for me, exploration is very important for the whole of the space industry in terms of developing the, the, lead, the cutting edge technologies, the um, pushing the limit in what space can do. Um, and feeding that back into the world of commercial telecoms or wherever else, and then finding ways of spinning off those technologies into, into everyday life. So I think that's the sort of story that one has to make in relation to space exploration. And the economic crisis is I mean, hopefully temporary. We have to plan for the future. We, we have to be optimistic. This is the essence of space exploration. So we have to work together and start right now planning for uh, what will be a bright future for mankind. Thank you. Yes, I, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Briefly, yeah, based on our ISS experience, the budget crisis is always lined up from 1985 to the, so far. And, uh, but the very important point is a mission objective is concrete item. And then shared, uh, supported by the government agreement. Then after that, uh, station, space station is keeping so far and beyond 2025 or 28. Uh, important point, key to the, our success is the first mission, uh, concrete mission objectives established by the uh, worldwide global people. And then uh, core is important. And then uh, how to share the, how to make it uh, by the technology and uh, mind. 
So that is a very important point for the future. So we asked uh, a potential uh, candidate agency or industry to go into our uh, world and to make up your idea and then finalize. Maybe it uh, need more time to complete or fix it. So the, the timing is it's a conceptual phase. So every idea is welcome. Thank you. Mr. Yes, I, I guess. Um, the way I would respond to that is that we're always seem. I don't want to diminish the current crisis, but we're always in a crisis, uh, different, different dimensions. I guess uh, it's never an easy time to invest in in these kinds of things. But um, in the history of people, humans, and societies, uh, great societies have explored, and um, exploration is an investment in our in our future. Uh, we. We have to take care of today's problems, but I believe that we have to invest in the future as well. Okay. Dr. DeFibo? Yeah, two, two comments. Uh, the first one is um, when you have a challenging objective, uh, you have to develop new technologies, you have to, uh, you have to, you need creative ideas. Uh, in terms of how to develop new abilities, but also in, on how you have to manage difficult situations. I mean, and uh, and uh, long-term exploration program, a global long-term exploration program, is by definition a complex system. is a is a difficult to put together, and you need a lot of technologies and a lot of new ideas. And this is feeding the society, feeding the future, feeding the young generations. But with the main comment I would like to make is that uh, uh, the global exploration strategy is an example per se on how you can cooperate uh, on a peaceful basis for the sake of humanity. And I believe that this uh, is really enough uh, to bring together all the world, I mean, on a global scale, all the main space agencies, and I hope also other agencies joining us in the future in order to do something again for humanity. Thank you. Okay, we don't have time for additional questions, so I will offer, um, since this is a relatively new activity in the long-term scope of exploration, if you do have a question, please write it down and pass it to me after the session, and we will uh, do our best to address them on the ISEG website. So with that, I would like to uh, thank the participants for um, their time in, in participating in this panel today. Thank the audience for your questions and call your attention to this wonderful uh, brochure which was present in everyone's um, bags when you registered for the conference. There are brochures, I think, uh, here located by the, um, by the exits. And hopefully today you learned, you learned something about the, the shared exploration vision and you take away with you a sense that uh, Agencies are committed to, coordinated, to coordinating and cooperating, and they're committed to finding the right um, activities that advance this shared objective um, and enable not only near-term decision-making individually, but long-term uh, vision, collective vision development. So uh, with that, um, uh, thank you very much for your participation.